All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Welcome to our house. Um, we're so thankful that uh, you're allowing us to worship with you and to lead you into worship this morning. Um, even though we're apart, that we can't uh, uh, be together in uh, at our the physical building, we know that we have God and he is with us. And that uh, even though uh, we may be physically apart, we are together in spirit, uh, worshiping uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we know that uh, he is with us no matter where we are. So let's worship the Lord this morning. Let's call upon his name and uh, sing of his praises and uh, just remember the good things that he has given us in this time of trial that, uh, that we have and that his grace is enough. So let's worship together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us in. Your grace is enough for us. 
as we go through this time of trial, Lord, we, we thank you that you are with us and that we can continue to call upon you and know that you are with us and that you will continue to build our lives, Lord. could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the namely name that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and
13 says how long O oh Lord will you forget me forever how long will you hide your face from me that's how it starts off but it ends with this but I trust in your unfailing love my heart rejoices in your salvation I will sing of the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. And even though we're going through this time of this pandemic and we're having to deal with the social, uh, the social distancing to keep everybody safe, God is still with us. And because of that, that he loves us, that we can sing this, that he has made us glad. Sure. 
tell in time of need. Whom have I in heaven but you? There's are beside you and you have made me glad and I'll say of the Lord you are my shield my strength my portion Jesus, you are. 
confidence that you are with us wherever we go. Thank you, Jesus. And in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, VCPC family. And good morning. Welcome to those who are watching online right now. It's great to have you this morning. Everything is not business as usual. We're living in a challenging and unparalleled time. We're all facing emotional, financial uncertainty. Christian or not, we all experience bumpy roads, worries at this time in life. We cannot avoid it. Tough and difficult times like COVID-19 pandemic have affected our lives and caused so many people to become worried and anxious. Worry comes in different shades, color, and age. We worry about so many things. It could be unemployment, financial difficulties, rent, our health, your upcoming wedding, your abusive spouse at home, and you probably wonder if you will be able to get into university or college next year. Or maybe someone cough or spat on your face, on the street, telling you that I have COVID-19. Maybe you know somebody infected or die, perhaps because of COVID-19. Can I ask you something? Is worry taking you hostage or holding you back? Jesus said, do not worry. Stop worrying before worry stops you. We're prone to worry, but Jesus reminds us that our Heavenly Father knows our needs. He is a provider. He will give necessary provision to His children. I want to read you a passage in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear? Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, say, what shall I eat, or what shall I drink, or what shall I wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus is saying to us that worry is of no use. The Greek word worry or anxious means to have a divided mind between legitimate or not legitimate thoughts. And the Bible is full of worriers. People that were so close to Jesus, people like um, the disciples 
or even Martha. Jesus said to her, she worries so much, so many things. Worry is wrong. And Jesus says, stop worrying. Three times in these nine verses, Jesus gives us three reasons why worry or anxieties is not of use in any circumstances. Number one, worry is pointless. Worry is pointless because it doesn't prolong your life. And look at verse 27. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Stop worrying before worry stops you. Worry has been connected to high blood pressure, um, heart problem, blindness, thyroid malfunctions, and even stomach disorder. And no one has ever advocated worry as a way to prolong life. I've yet to hear anyone says this. What you really need every day is to wake up first thing in the morning. Stress yourself out. It really helps you to get through your day. And it will also even add years, maybe even a decade to your life. Worry has never brightened up any day. Not even solving a problem or cure any disease. And Joe D. Coates says this. Anxiety is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you very far. Worries get you started, but it won't take you anywhere. So why then worry? You can't even add an hour to your life by worrying. It might even take a few hours out away from you. And number two, worry is needless. It is because it doesn't change anything at all. Look at verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Have you ever seen a bird begging for food on the street? Or have you ever seen flowers pulling its petals out because of a bad color job? I've never seen a bird worry or stress out over what to eat. They get up in the morning, chirping, singing, joyful sound, and everywhere. Birds have no eternal values. No bank's account. No mutual funds. No money to put aside. And Jesus didn't even die for the birds. And Jesus said, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Connie Ten Boom said this. Worry is like an old man with bended head carrying a load of feathers which he thinks are lead. Psychologist tells us that 85% of what people worry about never happens. People worry about the possibilities, the what ifs. People when people lose control, when people lose the ability to control life circumstances. Worry sets in. Worry keeps us from hearing God's voice. Worry does nothing, and it changes nothing to our circumstances. Worry only gives you a heartburn. And number three, worry is irrational. Worry is irrational because it doesn't provide you what you need. And Jesus said, many of us worry about life, worry about what to eat or drink, about our bodies, about what to wear. And then Jesus raised a question in verse 25. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. I believe most people would say, yes, for sure. And yet I see endless ads in the magazines or on the Internet about food, drink or clothing. While many people would say that, yes, for sure, and they also say this, sure, I could use a new pair of jeans or a new pair of shoes or a nice and expensive meal at a very nice restaurant with my spouse or friends. Or sure, I could use a new car. The list goes on and on and on and on. And Jesus said, life is more than food, clothing, birds, or flowers. Jesus said, you of little faith, worry comes down to a faith problem. Worry says that, God, you are a liar. I cannot trust you. 
Worry is to question God's integrity and His goodness. And worry shows a poor understanding of our Heavenly Father. And Jesus told us three reasons why worry is not of use. It's not of it's of no use. Now he's going to give us the cure for your worry. God is a provider. He is a protector. He is a faithful father and he cares about us. Jesus gives us three antidotes to cure our worries today. Number one, seek God first. Worry changes nothing, but trusting God changes everything. Jesus tells us to seek God's thing first and live a righteous life he would have us to live. And that's why verse 33a says this, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Put aside every distraction and focus on God right now. Faith demands movement. We, we don't get stuck in, in, in a cycle of worry. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow hasn't come yet. So stop worrying. Start seeking God. When you put God first, I guarantee you, everything else in life will fall into place according to His will and His provision. He takes care of the birds and flowers. He will surely take care of you because He is a good Father. He is a faithful God. No matter what is going to happen tomorrow, you have hope in God. Hope that He will make things right in His timing. Having faith, to have faith, have faith in God, friends. Trust Him. He knows your need and He cares for you. You may still struggle in the raging storm, but you know it is God who holds the future and He is in the boat with you. And number two, be thankful. God promised that he will provide our needs. And verse 33b says, and all these things will be given to you. All these things will be given to you. Knowing that God provides you with your need and you should be thankful. Give thanks to God. Start counting your blessings. Gratitude drives worries away because it cannot share the same heart. God has a good track record with you, no, in your life, no? Many times he got you through trials and hardship before, no? God gives, gave you solution to your problems before. So remember what God had done for you because he will continue to do it again and he will make a way through tomorrow's uncertainty. Wednesday night, we had a family devotion and we ask how we can help each other to look for God's presence in our lives. So we begin to start counting God's blessings in our family. Our hearts were glad and joyful after we hear so many God's blessings through the years. When you start counting blessings, count your blessings. You will keep your mind away from the problem. Set your eyes on the Lord and you will see God's presence in your life. The more you stare at the difficult circumstances, the bigger it gets. Rather than giving up, giving up to your worries, lift up your eyes to the Lord. And that's why Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. When you feel like you're sinking or you're suffocating by your problems, lift up your eyes to the Lord. Start giving thanks to him and start meditating on his words and his promises, his goodness, his grace, and the power of gratitude will let you experience peace, joy, happiness in the Lord. And number three, focus on today. Focus only on today, not yesterday and not tomorrow. And that's why verse 34 says to not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. 
each day has enough trouble of its own. You will be fine if you carry today's bag of trouble, but you will sink when you try to carry tomorrow's bag of trouble today. Jesus wants you to live one day at a time. Leave tomorrow alone. Okay? Leave tomorrow alone. He will give you enough grace and strength for today. When tomorrow comes, you trust God again and ask Him for grace and strength and He will give you enough for tomorrow. Jesus didn't mean in this passage that we, shouldn't, we should ignore the future or shouldn't plan for the future. And Jesus didn't teach that um, uh, we should have a carefree spirit. We are to concern about things. We can calmly plan and prepare for the future. Concern is positive. It feels energy. It will solve problems. So do not worry. Do not worry. Since the beginning of this year, our house has been plagued by mice. They came through the garage and went through the basement and then came to our kitchen. Needless to say, we were afraid and we were worried. You got it. But worry can paralyze people. I can stay up all night to worry about the mice, but it doesn't change my reality, my circumstances. So I stop worrying just like what Jesus teaches us. I learned the best way to cope with fear is to actually face it. Oh, did we ever pray? But God gave us a solution, an electric mouse trap. And I seal all the holes that I can from the basement to, to the main floor. And in just one weekend, we caught nine in total, six in one day, three adults, six babies, and one more I saw. And it went missing until Thursday morning when I was preparing my sermon and suddenly that little baby became a young adult and we locked eye to eye for just a brief, brief moment and then it went missing again. So I set up the mousetrap again. After all of that, what I, can do, what I can do, what I have done, I just stop worry about what will happen tomorrow. Charles Spurgeon says this, Anxiety or worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow, but only empties today's of strength. Maybe you worry about losing your job. Maybe you worry about losing your income or your investment. Or maybe you're worrying about the future economy. Maybe you worry about your sick friends or family member or relative in the hospital or self-isolation. Maybe we are facing COVID-19 pandemic. Our times are difficult ahead, but we don't worry. We thank God for His peace that surpasses all understanding. So friends, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. Do not go do, we're not going to, to live a life of fear. We are not of this world. We live by faith and not by sight. We do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Oh God, not my will, but your will be done. We are hard pressed every sigh, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Friends, do not let worry stop you today. Worry is of no use. It is pointless, needless, irrational. Put your trust in God today, and He will provide your need. The cure of worry is to seek God first. Be thankful. Give thanks to the Lord. Count your blessings. Focus on today and today alone. Tough times developed you to be a person of great faith. Regardless of your difficult circumstances, maintain unwavering faith. 
so that you will prevail in, in the end. And you have to have the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality. In his book, Good to, to, Good to Great, Jim Collins shares a story about a person's name by the name of James um, Stockdale. James Stockdale. Emerald James Stockdale was a Vietnam prison, prisoner. He recalled his future was bleak. His fate was uncertain. And yet he said he never lost faith in the end of his story. He never doubted only, not only that he would get out, but also he would prevail in the end and would turn the experience into a defining event of his life. He said not everyone made it out safely. Only some. And when he was asked why, he said the optimist did not make it out because they said to themselves, oh, I would be out by Christmas. Oh, I'll be out by Easter. Oh, I'll be out by next Christmas. They died of a broken heart. Stockdale says this. This is a very important lesson. You must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose with the discipline of conf discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. Friends, when you wrestle with life challenges, difficulties, like Stockdale, you will come back stronger from any difficult circumstances when you retain your faith in God. Don't lose it. And that you will prevail in the end and confront the most brutal fact of your current reality, whatever they might be, with His grace and mercy. Do not let worry stop you. Maybe some of you may be afraid and worry about the future right now. I don't, I know that the world can grow very dark and bleak. People are looking f around for, for answers. If you are looking for answer or looking for hope, I know you have a longing inside of you. I know you're looking for something. You're looking for more. You're looking for something different. Maybe you're looking for something that the world cannot give you. I've tried very hard before. I know how you feel because I've been there many, many years ago. Maybe you're looking for money, friends, relationship, excitement, whatever that might be. But none of these things make you happy. You still feel empty inside. Because you are, you, you're, you have a longing. You long for something and that the world cannot give it to you. Friends, I have a good news for you today. There is a God that is bigger than this world. And he loves this world so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come. He did not love us from heaven. He came down and showed us his love on earth. Jesus is the son of God. Sinless, pure, full of love, perfect in every way. He gave his life on the cross for you. And God raised him from the dead. Anyone, any one of you out there watching this right now, if you call on his name, you could be saved. This good news has the power to save who believes in Jesus. Maybe you recognize you don't have peace or assurance right now. You don't even know where you're at with God, where you stand with God. But listen, when you call on Jesus' name, he hears you. He hears your prayer. Tell him how you feel. Tell him your problems. Tell him your sins. He will forgive your sins and help you to get through any tough circumstances. When you watch this and you say, yes, I want this peace. Yes, I want to receive Jesus. 
I want his forgiveness. I want his grace. Let me tell you, he will make you new. The new has come. The old has gone. You turn away from your sin and you begin to call on Jesus right now. Okay? Can we pray? Can we bow and pray? Heavenly Father, would you forgive my sin? I believe Jesus is the Son of God and he saves me from my sins. Make me new today, oh God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. I am yours and you are mine. My life is not my own. So, Lord, help me to follow you. Help me to serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me and making me new today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, Lord, today, tell someone today. Tell someone this week. Drop us a line in the comment section. Message us from Facebook. Contact us from our website, vcpc.ca. Let us know about it. And let me welcome you to God's family this morning. In a few moments, we're going to have our communion together. I want you to take a piece of bread, a cracker, maybe a small snack, and a cup of water, just like this, a cup of water, a piece of bread. We're going to have communion together. Okay, before we're going to have communion, let me read you a passage. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 29. For what I receive from the Lord, I, I also, what I also pass on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And we had, when he has given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this, is my, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Why don't we spend some time right now to meditate, to, to, to search ourselves and see if we have sinned against God in any way. And if we do, pray and ask God for forgiveness before we take this communion. Lord, I thank you for your body and your blood. Thank you for sacrificing yourself for all of us. Thank you for the cross. And because of your cross and because of what you've done on the cross and your bloodshed had cleansed us white as snow. Lord, if we sin against you in any way, we ask for forgiveness. And I pray that as we partake this emblems, the bread, and a, and a cup. I pray a blessings on the bread and the cup. When we partake it, may we feel that Jesus is with us each and every moment. That we have strength and grace from you and that we can face to uncertain, any uncertainty of tomorrow. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take this bread together. And take this cup together.
Friends, may I encourage you today. Maybe this week even. Find a promise in the Bible that fits your problem and make that as a prayer. Like, for example, what we did today, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. Make that as a prayer. Do not worry, the Bible said. God will provide. Why don't we pray? Oh, Lord, you're great and you're awesome. I praise you by faith, your sovereignty over COVID-19, over all of our current reality. By faith, I praise you because nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with you, O oh God. I praise you. I don't need to worry about what I wear, what I eat, what I drink. I don't have to worry about or be anxious about my, my, my financial situation or my job, my relationship, my health, my future. I praise you because you are almighty God and nothing is impossible with you. And you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Friends. Have a wonderful week. Good morning, brother, sister, and friends. How is everyone? I hope you are all safe and healthy. It's been almost two weeks that we have to stay at home or work from home. There must be a lot of adjustment, but I know you'll be able to adapt. And for those of you who are still going to work, please know that we are praying for you. And here are some announcements. First of all, there are online gatherings happening. Uh, the Rice Fellowship is meeting Friday evening, so uh, please contact Patrick for more information. The W2W Women's to Women's Prayer Group is also meeting online on Thursday, 7.30. And you can contact Barb if you want to join. If you don't know the contact, you can contact the office at info at vcpc.ca or call the office at 604-876-1221 and leave a message. Please continue to support the church through online giving. You can go to our website and donate online. Also, there's no Good Friday service. Next service will be Easter Sunday. It will be 9.30 a.m. for English service and 11 a.m. for Cantonese service. So let's um, close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. Surround us nowadays a lot of bad news. It is very hard to hear those bad news. We hear people got sick, got isolated and lonely. People are struggling to provide for themselves and families. We're sad to hear this, but let's not be taken over by the bad news. But instead, we can bring all these news to you because we know you care. We want to bring our anguish to you. We want to bring our petition to you. Father, please hear our prayer. We know that you are a good father. We know we don't understand everything about what's going on. But we know our Lord Jesus has said, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrow, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Lord, please help us to trust you when bad news comes. Fill us with your hope so that we can respond with your love. Guide us to pray for the people in need and trust that our prayer will move your hands. Today we want to pray for the seniors and the special need children. Some of them lost access to the community programs they depend on for their well-being, whether it be the breakfast program or the meals program or disability support or any other home support. Lord, please remember them. Please motivate more help and bless and reward those who give. Lord, please help us to live a life that honors you no matter what we face today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you all next week.